Stephen A. Smith said that the Lakers had no chance in hell of beating the Warriors, then claimed he never said that. Colin Cowherd picked the Warriors in five, then doubled down and picked the Dubs in seven. ESPN posted an elimination update for every other team except for the Golden State Warriors, almost embarrassed as a network that they were wrong in their widespread predictions that LA would take the L. Seven out of eight CBS experts had the Lakers losing to the Dubs, 11 out of 13 ESPN experts had the Lakers losing to the Dubs, while 538.com gave the Warriors a 60% chance at advancing to the conference finals, of course equating to the Lakers having just a 40% chance, making them eat their words and then some. King James, Anthony Davis, D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves and company were absolute menaces on both ends of the floor, putting the Golden State dynasty in jeopardy, ending the Dubs' hopes and dreams by eliminating them in six. Stay tuned for every brutal take and why the Lakers' negative propaganda is nasty work. Right quick, just 13.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow your boy on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops if you're a fan of the content, and leave a like on this video for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks so much for supporting this platform by joining the family. While I've had the Lakers as title contenders ever since the trade deadline, making video on this team one after the next, the majority of my contemporaries, really aside from Dave McMenon, Sam Quinn, and Andre Snellings, not merely haven't felt that way, but have and continue to utterly dismiss LA as legit in 2023. But before getting to the mainstream blasphemy from typically flagrant, acclaimed talking heads, The Athletic also had some wild takes. The Athletic interviewed anonymous scouts, executives, and coaches who ultimately all picked the Warriors and concluded on the basis of this reasoning, quote, the Lakers are a different team since the trade deadline and they're a better team, but the Warriors look like they've got their mojo back, they've got their confidence, they're cohesive, all their stuff is behind them seemingly. Andrew Wiggins is back playing well and confident. I know they went to seven games against the Kings and easily could have lost the series, but they were down 0-2 and won four out of five. That's pretty good against a very good team, end quote. ESPN's BPI was actually the lone source to pick the Lakers. The Sports Network's Basketball Power Index is an algorithm that accounts for game-by-game -game efficiency, strength of schedule, pace, days of rest, game location, and preseason expectations. That said, while BPI favored the Lakers in that series, as their algorithm came to fruition, they had the now-eliminated New York Knicks and Philadelphia 76ers with better title odds than LA. With that said, let's on a separate note give credit to Kendrick Perkins, which I'd never thought in my adult life I would say, but the former Celtic and Perk on an episode of First Take back on April 7th predicted the Lakers would advance all the way to the NBA Finals, which as you know, the purple and gold are four wins away from currently doing so up in Denver to take on the albeit extremely dangerous Denver Nuggets, fueled by a man who many thought should have won a third straight MVP in the Joker. However, then there was that viral TikTok dog that I even saw a fellow NBA YouTuber of mine reference known as Air Korg, who many were trusting was correct about the Warriors winning in seven. After this pup known as Corgi, would rhythmically deflect an inflatable basketball onto the Warriors' side of the net in the exact order, giving the Warriors a 3-1 series lead. You had not just trolls on Twitter, but monetized analysts convinced that the dubs were winning in seven. Not only did I see a shall remain unnamed fellow NBA YouTuber legitimizing a dog's opinion over giving the Lakers respect, but Stephen A. Smith would legitimize said dog's opinion as well. None of us are perfect, at least as human beings. But um, I'm hearing something about somebody. Steph Furry, it's a dog. This dog gets stuff thrown to him, and it's a Lakers basket, and it's a Warriors basket. And you throw the ball up of uh, steps to the dog, and the dog hits it with his nose and knocks it back down into one of the nets. In game one, he picked the Lakers. In game two, he picked the Warriors. In game three, he picked the Lakers. Game four, 
he picked the Lakers. Game five, he knocked it into the Warriors basket. He's been perfect. None of us have. And now they talking about how Steph Furry, that this dude, this dog, has picked the Warriors, not only for game six, but for game seven. Hmm. Steph Furry. We can go with that. We can go with that. On top of that, not too long ago, Richard Jefferson would scoff at Perkins, suggesting the Warriors could make the conference finals, saying in response to Perk, quote, 13th in the West, and this man sat up here and told America that they could make the conference finals. The Lakers' ceiling is barely making the postseason, end quote. In that same segment, Malika Andrews was laughing at the idea of the Lakers being contenders based off the Phoenix Suns having Kevin Durant. Memphis, you're talking about Denver. You're talking about the Phoenix Suns. You're talking Suns. about the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> now on to our main event, though. Colin Cowherd being 100% wrong once, then for some reason making another prediction that was, you guessed it, 100% wrong twice. Um, a lot of people that I respect, respect, think the Lakers can beat the Warriors in six or seven games. I do not. I think it could be a five-game series for the Warriors. Later. I think it's going seven. I think Golden State wins the next two. Number one is two of the next three are at the Chase Center. Role players, which haven't done crap in L.A., role players tend to play much better at home. Bruh. Moving on from that blasphemy, and the shocking MVP, if you're a Laker fan at least, in this video, being Perkins, would call out Stephen A. Smith for his inaccurate takes about L.A. a few days ago, and here's what went down. <laughs> and you said, I must make this very, very clear. It's no way in hell the Los Angeles Lake are beating the Golden State Warriors. And I don't recall are. that. I, I have no recollection of that. Yeah. I mean, I, did, I, did, I predicted uh, the Warriors would win, but I don't recall saying there's no way in hell. I don't recall that. I think that's a bit extreme. Two seconds. Hell, yeah, hell. Yeah. Ain't no way in hell the Los Angeles Lakers are beating the Golden State Warriors. Stephen A. not only said that before this series and denied it, but the blasphemy spewed out of this man's mouth would also state that LeBron James wasn't only going to lose to Stephen Curry, but that he was afraid of Stephen Curry. I suspect there's a healthy level of fear. F-E-A-R. Yes, I said it. Fear oh of Steph God. Curry. Not only did the media get cocky about the Warriors clinging onto the narrative after it was already disproven throughout the regular season that this wasn't the same team, but even after going down 2-1, to one, you had fans getting cocky, like this dude. Man was attempting to flex four rings in a building that, on the back of Kobe and Shaq within this century, racked up their championship total to 17. I'm just happy the fans near him were letting him have it by stating the facts. But what if I told you after all that blasphemy I just put you through, there was one man who was more confidently wrong than all of those extremely well-paid, not trolls, let me be clear, but analysts albeit who are there for entertainment, but who are attempting to make the right opinion. This was a man less acclaimed than Stephen A. and Cowherd, known as Craig Carton, a man with a carton full of BS in terms of hot takes, brought to us by FS1. And you have Steph with a better shooting eye, even though Clay didn't shoot well. Yo, know, they're a really good team. I still think, you know, man for man, they're a more talented team depth-wise than the Lakers. If the Golden State Warriors take out the Lakers, can we stop all the nonsensical arguments about LeBron's the GOAT and all that other stuff? Can we put that to the side, please, and acknowledge that Steph Curry owns LeBron James? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. Even after the Lakers disproved those narratives, some still have the audacity to state that they won't merely be able to stop Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets, but they've totally counted the Lakers out. 
clutch points. Not merely has the Nuggets winning this series in six, but the Joker averaging a gaudy 35 points and 15 assists per game in this series. The Lakers' negative propaganda is nasty work. 